views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. So we have here Rosa Garcia, Haiti Rosario, and Joe Morrison. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm over there. I'm like, all right, you all are going to march in. No, Haiti's going to twerk in. That's what Haiti wants. <laughs> so like I said, we have all these mothers from different walks of motherhood. We have Rosa Garcia, who's the owner of the Mont Haven Bar and Grill, the venue we're at right now. Amazing. <laughs> And she also owns 31 Agency, and so she's the mompreneur on the panel today. We have Haiti Rosario, who is going to be talking about wisdom. I mean, she is the mom that has done it all. She's raised five children. She also went back to school. She is now a teacher, doing amazing work, and like she says, living her best life. <laughs> Whenever you go on her Instagram page, she's like, it's lit! <laughs> it's lit! <laughs> That's Haiti. <laughs> And we have Joe Morrison, who's a stay-at-home mom. She's going to be speaking from that perspective. But she also is a blogger, and she also has her own YouTube page. So let's welcome our panelists. <laughs> so, Rosa, we're going to start with you. I just want to... Oh, you wanted to... Say, I <laughs> We're going to start with you. Just want to hear about your story um, about how you are making motherhood work. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, everyone, for those that don't know me, my name is Rosa Garcia. I am the sole owner of My Haven Bar and Grill. I opened My, I opened my Haven Bar on November 18, 2013. I found this job on Craigslist back in 2007, right after I gave birth to my first daughter. I started off as a property manager, bookkeeper, restaurant manager, and then the restaurant closed in 2012 due to Hurricane Sandy. And um, I kind of saw the opportunity, gave the landlord a proposal, um, gave me a loan, and I opened the doors to my haven in 2013. And I will be celebrating my five year anniversary in November of this year. Um, 2017, I opened my haven on the go, which is a food truck concept that I joined with Fresh Direct. Um, then in 2018, I opened my Haven Hospitality Group, where I consult all the restaurants. Right now, I do consulting for two restaurants. One is a bagel shop that's in 138th Street. The other one is Casa Clema, which is in University Avenue. Uh, she received that restaurant after 30 years. Her parents gave it to her. She kind of needed some guidance, so I'm kind of helping her on that. And then I launched 31 Agency in July 31st of this year which is more of a campaign and it's a way of life that I want people to be inspired. I want everyone to love themselves. I feel like nowadays people are trying to fit in so much. We're changing our true identity, we're changing our hair, our makeup, or the way we dress, that when you go home and you take all that stuff off, you're still unhappy with the person that you see in the mirror. So just stick to who you are. No one can be you, no one is ever gonna be like you, talk like you, walk like you, dress like you. And when you find that person that loves you for who you are, then just stick to them. And if they don't, then next, because there's plenty of people in this world, and you will find one, don't rush. You have to love yourself in order for someone else to love you. And if you're unhappy, you're never gonna be happy in a relationship. So, thank you. Hi, my name is Haley Rosario. I am a, I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. To this country when I was 21, and I have five children. Thank you. And um, yes, yeah, five children, and um, I also try to uh, next month I'm gonna make a course of mental health to help people. Yes, and that's it for now. Hi guys, um, I'm Joe Morrison. Um, I'm a stay. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom. 
Um, and once I became a mother, I just found myself in a place of um, just, you know, I loved being a mom, but I wanted to be something more. And I'm yeah. like, how, how can I like, still inspire people and still be the best that I can be because you know everyone says once you have a kid your life is over so I'm like no I'm determined to make sure that that's not true for me um so I really just like seeking God and trying to figure out you know what my purpose is and through that I realized that what excites me what makes me happy is encouraging other moms encouraging other women so um that's how my blog kind of came about with me talking about motherhood and motivation and then from our blog it grew into a youtube channel and from a youtube channel it grew into a magazine so i'm just like um really passionate about not just mothers but women as well just you know not letting anything hold you back not letting anything stop you from pursuing your purpose because we're all here for a reason we all like as she was saying we're all here and there's only one us so why live life not being the best you that you can be so that's my heart that's my passion is just women being the best that you can be and love so um, I was. Uh, let me hear this one. Yeah, hello. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so I want to start off with what you said, Joe. Um, a lot of people have that concept, and I don't know if many women feel that now. But when you have a baby, do you feel like, oh, that's it? How many of you felt like that? <laughs> you know, so we want to address that. You know, how do you, how did you say, you know what, I'm going to continue, I'm going to balance this out and still go after my dreams, still, still go after my goals? How are you balancing our motherhood? Because Rosa, when you were speaking, I was like, I'm tired. <laughs> like, she, I was like, she did this, she did that. I'm like, how do you balance all of that out if there is a balance? We'll so start off with, we'll oh, go me? down the line. I just don't think about it. Um, <laughs> honestly, there's 24 hours in a day. Use them as yes. much as possible. Uh, someone just asked me, and that is like, Rosa, did you get any sleep today? I've been up since 4 a.m. <laughs> um, I was here at the restaurant last night, went to the bagel store to consult at 5.30, then came here, helped her a little bit, got dressed in the bathroom, did my makeup in the bathroom. And um, I just feel like, stop. Turn that little voice in your head that's telling you you can't do it. Oh my God, I'm tired. Uh, yeah. Stop thinking about it. Focus on the now, okay? I, I, I swear to God, I went to therapy and the, my therapist um, recommended I read the book, The Power of Now. Yeah. We're so focused on the past. We're so focused on the future. Oh my God, how am I gonna pay the rent next month? You just pay the rent this month. Why are you worrying about the rent next month? Like, enjoy the now. Surround yourself with the present. And I think that's what our issue is. We're always worried I, I'm all the time. And we give ourselves anxiety. I think that's what it is. So I just focus on the now. If I have to go to the bagel store, I focus on the bagel store. When I finish the bagel store, I focus on what I gotta do for her. Then I focus on getting myself dressed. So just one thing at a time, because if you think about the 30 things that you have to do, oh, you won't get it done, and you're going to give yourself anxiety. Yeah, so that's, right. that's my advice. I wanted to ask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How did you balance everything out? Because when I look at my mom and what she was doing with all of us, it never looked like it was just, it looked effortlessly, right? Like, but I know now that I'm a mom, I know that it wasn't. I know that there are times you want to pull your hair out, you know? <laughs> but how did you manage to balance everything out? And now that you're looking at your kids and they're all grown, you know, how does that make you feel? What's the advice you have for us on balancing? Well, I start my day meditating. That's the first thing I do in the morning. At five o'clock in, in the morning, I get up and I meditate because that's what make my day going easier. And waiting for them, the five, I, the five of them bombarding me. <laughs> Before they start bombarding me, I have to be in peace. So that's how I start my day, meditating and um, getting centered on myself. And that's the way I go through the day. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would say for me, the best way that I was able to find balance um, is to just really focus on the end goal of like why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, and the end goal, again, is my son. At the end of the day, he gave me a different motivation, a different drive that I never had before. Um, I feel like a superwoman because I know I'm, I'm doing what I need to do for him. So that gave me um, a drive. So focusing on 
why I'm doing what I'm doing, and then also focusing on like um, the end goal. Like for me, it's so rewarding knowing that like women can get together, encourage each other, and cry together. Like just that, even though it's like a virtual space, yeah. but just having those moments of like you know I'm not alone, as you were saying. Yeah. So I guess those two end goals: seeing my son in mind, wanting him to know that I did all this for him, and that he was not something that was a setback. He was actually my motivation. Um, and then just the end result of just knowing that like women are getting together, empowering each other, motivating each other. Even if you're just impacting one, I always try to keep that in mind. It's all about the one. We can get so caught up in numbers, how many followers we have, how many people like the picture, how many this, how many that. But for me, my focus is on the one. And if I could impact one person with my story, then that's what really keeps me going. So let's talk about the challenges of motherhood, right? Or the unpredictabilities that we have with motherhood. Because I think, um, like you were saying, we have our good days, but then we also have our bad days where sometimes we set out goals, but then it's like you just don't hit that checklist, right? You make the whole checklist and like, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna get this done. The end of the day happens and you're like, what did I, I didn't get anything done today, you know? But how do you encourage yourself and keep on going? I always give myself credit. Um, if I had 10 things to do and I got two of them done, guess what? Tomorrow I finish the other eight. <laughs> now, if yeah. you really start, I feel like negativity has to leave your mind and your body all the time. If you're, if you're hard on yourself, you're really not gonna get much done because you're always gonna let yourself down. But if you give yourself credit, you know, it's like they say, if you only focus on that employee whenever they do something bad, but you don't give them credit when they do something good, they're not gonna be, you know, they're gonna be discouraged. They're gonna be like, oh, really? So I, I came on time a hundred times, and the one time that I get late, I you know I get penalized. Right. So you have to give yourself credit. I feel right. like we're not robots, you know, um, and that's it. I just you have to give yourself credit, pat yourself in the back. You got two out of eight. Guess what? Tomorrow you go harder and you try to tackle the other eight, or do four and then leave it for the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. I. Think about um, I do exercises. I go for to work for a walk, and that's how I motivate myself. Also, um, writing book. Uh, I mean, reading book. I'm sorry for my English. Stop it! Stop it! Hold on. I want you all to say, put that away, hey. Put that away. I'm gonna read you what you're saying. Right. So, Mama, we understand you. Don't think about the accent. All right. I had an accent. So, yeah, that's exactly. one of my motivation. Uh, go for exercise and to call um, people who need um, to hear to to hear my voice. Um, like a lot of people calling me for advice, a spiritual advice. I'm very big about spiritual. So, and that's why I motivate myself. Helping people. Yes. Yes. Um, I would say the best way that I overcome like not being so hard on myself um, is just giving myself like I'm all about self care. So I first of all I'm realistic. So I I cannot. Me and my sister were just talking about this. Like it's unrealistic to plan out 40 things on your list when you know you have a kid. You know you ha may have a husband, a boyfriend, a a, a a home to take care of. Come on, moms, we do it all. Um, but like so, it's very unrealistic for me to set up all these expectations. So I try to. I do make a list, but I try to prioritize the list. So, girl, my English. <laughs> Um, so I, I try to set like maybe the top three things that are most important and, and as Rosa was saying if they don't get done I don't sweat it I put on a movie Netflix to chill and I'm just okay oh, uh, it'll get done when it gets done absolutely yeah because we can't be so hard on ourselves we already carry so much weight so That's then right. us being hard on ourselves when the world's hard on ourselves please thank God yeah. <laughs>
so. And I think we do that a lot, especially with social media. Social media allows, gives us the space to compare ourselves so much. Oh, look what she's doing. What am I doing, right? That's always been my, that was my story. And I said I had to let that go. You know, when I was looking at my peers and I saw some people like going up and down and traveling and doing all this stuff, I was like, you know what? You have to focus on your own path. You really do. And just continue to stay focused on it. Don't, come, don't look to the left, don't look to the right. I'm quoting Byron, right? Right? Right, don't look to the left, don't look to the right, but just focus on what God has given you, you know? And God has given us each a gift. So like, how do you, I guess like when, how do we stop the comparison game? How do we stop the mom shaming? How do we continue to bring each other forward? And you know what, the reason I wanted mothers from all different stages of motherhood is because sometimes um, we'll see a group of moms and if they're all CEOs, it's like, well, what are the stay-at-home moms doing? Or if they're stay-at-home moms, it's like, well, how can they leave their kids? Or the mompreneurs, well, you know, you know, there's always some comparison and it's like, it really needs to stop. We just need to, uh, encourage one another. Like, what's the message you want to give there, like on mom shaming and comparing ourselves? I use my social media pretty much to inspire people. Um, I post that I'm up at four in the morning and I go to sleep and I've been up for 21 hours just to let people know that there's 24 hours in a day and if I can do it, you can do it. Um, I put quotes in my, uh, my 31 agency page. Why? Because sometimes you need a little reminder. It just says stop being so hard on yourself. You know, focus on your goal. Um, apologize for being so hard on yourself. And um, again, yeah, my social media is pretty much to inspire mothers and everybody. And I'm surprised about the amount of DMs that I get um, from, <laughs> from all the females that follow me on social media. Um, I've had meetings with a couple of them that want to talk to me about, okay, I, I want to start a business, what should I do? And I freely give you the advice that you need. I try to connect you with whoever you need to connect. And again, stop, just because I'm a, we're entrepreneurs doesn't mean that you have to be entrepreneurs. There's probably a certain passion that it, you're, you're good for that you could just go for it. You just have to find that passion. Stop comparing yourself like, oh my gosh, she owns a business, I want to own a business. I will not advise you to. <laughs> I, I don't sleep, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm a morning person. I just, three, four hours of sleep, I'm fine. I work just fine. Look at me. I'm up four hours. And, um, but some people can't do it. So again, I, this is me, you're you, and what works for me might not work for you. So you just have to find what works for you and just stick to it. Hey, yes. <laughs> Did you find it difficult when you're raising your kids to find a community of mothers to join with, or did you find that you, you were isolated? I didn't have time. I didn't have time to, to socialize with people um, because I used to have two jobs in raising the, them up, and I also was planning to go to school. So I couldn't socialize. But uh, um, one of the advice is that you have to be you. Each one of us are different person in here. And we we have different, different ideas. And God leads you to do what you need to do. So you don't need to copy anybody, like Rosa said before. We all are unique human beings. We all are unique divine child, child of God. Yes. So, so as a stay-at-home mom, how do you make sure that you are in different mommy circles and that you're staying encouraged and you know uh, being empowered by other women? Right. Um, I would say actually social media, if you're not wasting the time comparing yourself, could be a great place to find community. Um, and it's actually amazing the amount of people who um, are kind of more supportive than the people in my real like in my real life but from social media there's so many people that are so supportive and we support each other we uplift each other um, and then I'm also just blessed that uh, me and all my friends had babies like it wasn't a pregnancy back y'all but we all just happened to get pregnant at the same time so it was kind of easy forming the community but I would say that you have to put yourself out there and you can't be afraid to do that so if that means going to the library doing toddler time and actually speaking to another mom or if that means going to the park and actually opening up like a lot of times we're afraid to 
put ourselves out there because we're all afraid of rejection, but I mean, the best way to form community is to just be yourself and show people, and it may not work. Sometimes I meet moms and I'm like, ooh, that's our last talk. And sometimes <laughs> you meet moms and you really click, but if you're not putting yourself out there, you know, then you don't really know. So I would just say put yourself out there. It's okay if it doesn't work, but at least you know that you tried. So we were talking about time. Time, is, how, many, how many of you have a problem with time? Like organizing your time, that is a challenge. Right, I do too. <laughs> how do you all do that? Like how is time management, um, how do you, is it something that you, that is challenging to you right now? Is it something that you're still trying to tackle? Time management and mommyhood? Nope. <laughs> uh, like I said, um, my support system, my mom and my sister, they help me a lot. So because of them, I'm able to manage a lot of things throughout my day. Um, I'm able to make a quick phone call like, hey, last minute meeting, last minute network event, can someone pick up my child? Picked up, keep going, get home. Um, but yeah, if it wasn't for my support system, I would have a problem with my time management, but thank God my mom and my sister are amazing, so nope, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> I manage my time um, trying to <laughs> go to different events. Um, I always, when I get up from work, I go and take a nap, and after that, my life goes on and on. <laughs> I'm living my best life. <laughs> Since I don't have little kids, kids, kids yeah. like you guys, but I still have little grown-up kids <laughs> that I need to support. I, I support them. I, I always find the time for everything. I don't know how. Yeah, I, I'm 62 and a half, but I have an energy that some of my kids say, Mom, I don't know, but I have the energy. So, yeah. um, I think for me, I'm just balancing my time management but what I've realized is that like every second of the day counts yeah. so like after um, I'm also in school part-time so on the bus going to school I'm literally writing like six blog posts I'm planning out a YouTube video like down to the punchlines so, like I, I'm using every second of my day like when my son goes to sleep then I'm doing homework so I guess it's just like it's so easy to use that time to like watch TV or like scroll on Instagram which I do a lot, but it's um, it's just use it every second and every opportunity of the day that you have um, because, again, if you're focused on like who you're impacting and what it's all about, then it just gives you the motivation to keep doing it. So I want to talk about how motherhood has changed you in the stage that you're in now. So I want to start with Haiti. Haiti, you're in the empty nester stage, and like you, when you said, you have little adults that just don't raise me. But you're in the empty nester stage where they've moved, that everybody's living their life, you know, you don't have to uh, stay at home with them anymore. You know, they're able to make their own decisions based on the foundation that you've given them. But talk about what that transition was like, when it was like, okay, I'm getting my life back. You know, how did you move on from that? Because I know it's difficult when all the children are leaving the house. How did you deal with that transition? Well, I started um, to change my my life. Um, I say, well, three things. I changed my eating habits, um, became vegetarian. I exercising, like I said before, and I also trying to live a life of the good karma. Yes. Yes. When I say good karma, is um, I'm talking about. Uh, not to judge people, um, forgiveness. I'm very big about forgiveness. So I started forgiving myself. Uh, every morning I go, uh, after I meditate, when I go to the shower, I go to the mirror, and I recommend to each one of you to do this exercise, very powerful. Uh, I started forgiving yourself. I look at the mirror, and I look at the purple on my eyes, and I start saying, I forgive you, Haiti. I love you, Haiti. I forgive you, Haiti. And then from there, I start, I 
I, I get the power to forgive everything that happens to me during the day. And I, I'm very big up. That's one of my superpowers, <laughs> to forgive. I learn how to, I, I learn how to forgive people. And how did you find the courage to go ahead and start living your best life? <laughs> well, um, I started feeling lonely, and I saw that so many beautiful people out there, especially the millennials. <laughs> the millennials. Um, and I say, why not go to outside and give them support? And that speak me too. I learn from each event, events that I attend. I learn from there, and that's that's motivated me to 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 go and and and, and find the joy inside of me. Mm -hmm. and did I answer? Yes. 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 So Joe, um, your son, he's three, right? Two. He's two. Yeah, so you've been a mommy for two years. Yeah. Tell me how life has changed for you. Um, I went through a lot of transitions. I would say the first one was with, with friends. No? I would say the first one was with friends. Um, you know, you become a mom and you, it's like a happy moment, but then it's like kind of sad because you can't just get up and go when everybody else is getting up and going. Your friends don't understand because they don't have kids why you're not getting up and going. So that becomes like an awkward exchange. And then like your husband or your boyfriend, whoever you have your kid with, you know, it's hard to find that balance with like, how are we still gonna make our relationship work, but still give the baby attention. So I would just say it was a lot of transitions. Um, but in all of my relationships and a lot of transitions within myself because um, I believed the lie that my life was over. I believed the lie that I wouldn't be able to, you know, chase after and do, um, chase my passions and pursue my dreams. I believed that. So it was a lot of transitions and then it was a lot of, as, as Haiti said, talking to myself like, no, your life is not over. Get up, <laughs> do what you have to do. You're here for a limited amount of time. Use it to the best of your ability. Um, so I would just say it was a lot of transitions, a lot of crying, um, and then a lot of just realizing who's there for you in the long haul and realizing that a baby does not ruin your life. So Rosa, you have two daughters. Um, how old are they? 11, 11 and 2. 11 and 2. So it's kind of like you waited, like you were almost there, and then it's like, oh, I have another one on the way. <laughs> <laughs> so just talk about uh, what that has been like because it's like your daughter she was becoming independent and then now it's back at the baby stages. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> um, my first, born in 2007, um, I think God has a great sense of humor because we're all the same sign. We're all three Aquarius in the house. Um, I'm January 31st, my big one is February 8th, and my little one is February 12th. I love the fact that he gave me two Aquarius because I understand myself better than anybody else. Um, my first child changed me for the better. I feel like growing up, I didn't really have a relationship with my mom. And with my daughter, I wanted to break that cycle. And I love my daughter. I tell her I love her at least 100 times a day. She's very affectionate with me. And it's a complete opposite of the relationship that I have with my mom. Um, and again, I feel like a lot of times that could happen to us growing up. We don't have that really close relationship with our parents and then we don't do it with our kids because we didn't get it. I feel like you have the right to change that. Right. You know, yeah. they are your kids. Make sure you give them what you wanted your parents to give yeah. you when you were a yeah. kid. Yeah. So I do that with my kid. Then I was told that I couldn't have any more kids. At first I was really mad at God and I'm like, why can I have any more kids? I'm still young, I'm in my 30s. And um, again, good sense of humor. One day, um, I went to Samana, Dominican Republic, and I'm like, why am I nauseous? <laughs> I was pregnant. Gave birth to my second daughter, 2016, mm -hmm. another Aquarius. Um, and I love my kids. I mean, they motivate me every day. Uh, because of my daughter as well, I started the IME campaign. She is so uh, confident, independent, and um, I have to be that in order for her to kind of you know, follow my lead. And I just, my kids are my main focus and my only concern. Right. 
So Mom's Make Work is all about going after our dreams, right? So each of one of you ladies, I feel, are living that. You know, you're making it work, you're going after what you want. How did you, how did you go after the dream and turn it into a goal and make it into a reality? After I was fired in 2006 for being pregnant, I didn't work. Yeah, I, I got it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I was fired. I used to work in Long Island City. I was fired because I was pregnant. I wasn't going to be capable of being an office manager, which you're always sitting down. And um, I took that time off to just you know, enjoy my pregnancy, and um, I connected with my daughter, but the relationship that I was in was really stressful, so it still gave me preeclampsia, for those that know, like stress. Uh, so I had to get cesarean with both. Um, so I lost my... Whoop. How did you turn your dream How did I turn it? Yeah. Um, my kids, I mean, my kids are my biggest motivation. I want, I said, you know what, why not? I feel like if I'm in a situation, there's always growth, there's always potential to be better, to... If you don't open your mouth, nobody's gonna feed you. So my bee being here, I, I saw an opportunity. I went from a property manager to a restaurant manager to doing the books. I taught myself QuickBooks. I Googled the shit out of QuickBooks. And again, it was in the rest, it was in the qualifications. Everything was QuickBooks, QuickBooks, QuickBooks. Well, guess what, that's not gonna stop me. I'm gonna teach it myself. And I said, yeah, I know it. And now I'm the best at QuickBooks that you could think of. But nobody taught me that. And again, it's just not being negative with yourself. Um, how did I turn my dream? Um, honestly, being an entrepreneur was not in my dream. I was just uh, at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, why not? You know. And I, I took the challenge. And five years later, I'm here. Right. When you look at the dreams that you wanted to fulfill, how did you say, you know what, it's the right time to go after this and it's going to become a reality for me? My dream was to be a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> and I came and I worked uh, as a regular dispatcher for 17 years. And when I saw my kids growing up, I said, well, I'm going to have grandkids and I want them to see grandma being a professional. And I, I have my associate degree in accounting in the Dominican Republic. And then I decided to go back to, uh, to the college. I went to college and it was tough because they were just, from, some of them was in college, one at home, and so I go to one babies. So I say, but this is my time. This is the time that I need to do it. And I went to the, to college to finish um, for three years. And I changed um, from, I say, I'm not gonna be a radio dispatcher for the rest of my year. And, so, and I, I, I met my friend that she's here, Lorraine. <laughs> Shout out to you. Yay! And she said, oh, come to, oh, why don't you apply for the DOE? I said, no, I cannot work in the DOE. And she said, yeah, you can do it. You can go to college. She encouraged me. And I went to college and I did my degree. I made my degree and that's why I, I'm working for the DOE now. How did you go after your dreams and make them a reality? Um, I think the best way that I can explain that is just taking it one day at a time. Um, again, just setting realistic goals and and also just like not relying on myself, relying on God and just knowing that, you know, he created me and put me here for this purpose. So even if I take a step out, I may fail, I may stumble, but he always he's always going to have my back. Um, so I think that keeping myself grounded in him and grounded in the fact that I I know that this is what he's called me to do, where he's called me to be, um, and just trusting him and relying on, just relying on him. That's the only way I could explain it because if I rely on myself, uh, it's not, it's not going to happen. I'm going to let my fears, my insecurities, I'm going to let all that stop me because you know how insecurities could be. So yeah, I would just say relying on God and really, literally taking it one day at a time.
So self-care is really big, right, when it comes to motherhood. A lot of, that's what, one thing I feel that we take advantage of, self-care, that we don't give ourselves enough of it. How do we say, you know what, I put everything aside and just to make sure that you're giving yourself some care? And how, what are some of your self-care tips? And maybe something that you wish that you would change, that needs to change. <laughs> Rosa <Rose's sleep. laughs> Um, my self-care, um, I run. I trained last year for the New York City Marathon, and this year I just do half. I do half. I know, I'm a runner, right? My only problem that I wish I could change is that I train. I don't train. I get up, and I go do a half, and I come back to work. It's not good for my shins or for my knee. You're supposed to actually train throughout the week, two miles here, three miles there. Just last Sunday, I ran the Bronx 10, 10 mile. Luckily, thank God for my friend that paced me. I did it an 11 minute mile. I don't know how in the world I did it with no training, but um, that would be my change. I do want to train uh, just so I don't hurt myself because if I hurt myself, then I hurt pretty much everything else that I have going on. Yeah. That's right. Katie, sit and share some of your self-care tips. Well, um, one of my self-care is um, exercising. I exercise like crazy. <laughs> um, yoga, um, intensity, a lot of exercise. And I talk myself in the middle. I say, you are beautiful. You are. <laughs> and I talk to myself. Yeah, I love, I, you know, I love myself. And now, um, I go for um, massage. Yeah, you need that. Make sure you get your massage. Right the there. Girl. The girl. <laughs> and I go to treat myself. I go for a dinner by myself. Yeah. Yes, so with my, uh, my rosé, black, glass of rosé. <laughs> I go to the movies. I go to Broadway shows by, by myself. And oh, there's a lot of things that you can do for self-care. And guys, it, that is very important. Yeah. Self-care with capital S is so important for each one of us. Because if you don't love yourself, nobody else can gonna love you. Yep. Yep. Um, I think self-care for me is more just like the little things. Um, painting my nails, watching a show that I want to watch, binging on YouTube. Like, to me, self-care for myself and the time that I have is just doing something that I enjoy without Mark, without my son, without anyone interrupting me, without anyone bothering me. Um, but I wish I did um, more grand things, like went to a Broadway show. Like, I feel like I need to step it up a, a little notch. Um, yeah, but self-care to me is just a second going to the grocery store by myself. Like, that's self-care to me. Just like being with my own thoughts and in peace. So that's my self-care. I also travel by myself. That's right. And I only find a lot of people. <laughs> I take that first and I have it blast every time I go to travel by myself. She My mom is not going to like me for this, but that's what they're always talking to, so, to just go out and just so that be by yourself. Yeah, One of the quotes um, that I put on the table is step into your season and fall in love with you again. You know, how do you do that? Like with so, to getting rid of so many of the doubts that we may have, you know, feeling like maybe our body has changed, but maybe our mindset has changed with motherhood. Is that something that you all have dealt with? I went to therapy. <laughs> um, at first, honestly, I'm sure a lot of you probably think the way I do. I thought therapy was for divorce or crazy people. Um, I'm neither one. So, um, no, I went to therapy and she helped me a lot. Um, before, I used to have really long curly hair and my daughter was going through some insecurities with, you know, her hair and her forehead. And I'm like telling her that she's beautiful, but then I realize I'm being a hypocrite because I'm telling my 11 year old that she's beautiful, but I'm insecure about the way that I look. So I went to therapy and she kind of helped me. I went, I did, I did a trip by myself to Turks and Caicos, came back, uh, then never showed my bangs ever again. Then I decided to shave my entire head and I haven't been more confident than ever. Uh, therapy has helped me a lot. I just returned again, um, not because I, I have internal problems, but it's more like um, 
we're always investing in, you know, shoes, clothes, uh, hair, expensive bags and trips, but you have to, you're, the main investment should always be yourself. So you should always find a way to always better yourself internally. You know, whether you invest in a book, you invest in a therapist, you invest in a, in a personal trainer. Like, stop complaining, like, oh my God, I don't like the way I look in these clothes. What are you doing about it? You know, so you you can afford a personal trainer. YouTube, work out at home, 15 minutes. Take it slowly. There's always ways, but we always want the results to come like right away, and we we stop. And um, my advice is, you could do it. Just really, really focus on yourself, and um, I think the best version of you is yet to come. You know, it's it's an ending process. Because I want to come back to you, okay. jo, just to talk about like how you've dealt with the changes that have come with motherhood. Um, I think for sure I've dealt with like the doubts, the insecurities, um, but I think, I don't know what's happened in like the last few weeks, like as Rosa was saying, like uh, clearly I have a five head going on here, but if um, all my life I wore a bang, but Recently, I'm just like, you know what? I don't care. I, I have to love me for me. I have to love me for myself. So, same as her, I cut my hair off. Um, I used to complain. You know, it's so easy to go on so social media. You see the Kardashians with their banging bodies and their yeah. flat stomachs. And you like, yeah, I know, that they bought, right, exactly. So, but, but even though we know they bought it, it still makes, well, for, let me speak for myself, it could still make me feel like, you know, like, dang, what, look at these rolls. But, I'm just in a stage where I'm like, I don't care. This is my stomach. Thank God they come out with high waisted everything. <laughs> all my pants, all my skirts, yes. everything's gonna be high waisted. And I'm just like living my best life. I'm gonna see your brains, but I mean, I think it really has to come from within yourself. And at, at, at some point, you have to be tired of like complaining. Just com yeah, complaining about all the things that you can't change. My forehead's always gonna be this size. I'm always gonna be this height. I'm, I well. According to the amount of food I eat, I'm probably gonna be this way for a little while. But you just make it work. High waisted jeans, cut your hair off, throw some makeup, and it has to come from within. It really has to be you, you loving how you look, no matter like what anybody else thinks. But it's a process. Like it's easy for me to sit up here and say this, but no, like I've been. I, my son is two, my whole pregnancy, I hid, I felt so insecure about myself. After him, I felt so insecure about myself. I think oftentimes we like make it seem like, okay, I say I'm gonna love myself and boom, now I love myself. It's a process. As she was saying, daily affirmations, what does God say about me? He says I'm beautiful, he says he's made me with a purpose, he says that I'm specific to myself, he says that I'm made in his image. So you just gotta speak those, those, those affirmations over yourself. And you have to believe it first. So I think once you believe it, confidence just comes following behind you. That's right. I particular, particularly never had time to um, to get focused on my beauty or anything. I was so busy with those five children that I never, <laughs> I never had a time. So what works for me is that I always talk to myself and I don't care about what people think or say about me. I care about myself. Right. I know who I am. Yeah. I am a, I'm beautiful. I am sexy. Yeah. 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 And that, like I said before, in the closet, <laughs> she twerked. I twerked. You need to accept yourself the way you are because right. everybody's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful coming from inside. Mm -hmm not from outside yeah. and so what people think and say about you it's none of your business that's right that's right from the north to the south to the west to the east we are expanding our services and upgrading technology at lehman college and now bronxites have an innovative media production facility in the east bronx at mercy college in the hutch metro center the windows on the east bronx studio a state-of-the-art control room, media labs for production and training, and other media-capable spaces. Training, workforce development, leading-edge technology, and programs that help you share your ideas, your voice, on your channels, locally and globally. Build media and technology skills at BronxNet and build your dreams. 
because now that you've heard a little bit from these ladies, it's time for, to hear from you. Do we have any questions? Any questions you'd like to ask our mothers today? Yes. Oh my God. So, <laughs> ask, ask your daughter. <laughs> How did you figure out to balance being a mom and a friend to us? You know what I mean? Like, how, how did you do that? Because Cherry, <laughs> you come into this part. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things that I I was thinking because when I grew up, I, I never had the connection with my mother and father to to ask them, ask them, ask them questions that I wanted to know. They always say, oh no, it's okay. It's this. So when you guys are starting asking me questions, I say, well, I have to be the best friend because I was, do, I was do, doing double, father and mother at the same time. And I say, I have to be the best friend. I don't want that they get false information outside. So that's why I decided to be your friend as a mom and dad at the same time. Mm -hmm. My wife. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely married outside of my league, so <laughs> praise him. So a question to you, Veronica, and I guess everyone else. How do you combat mom shaming that you see on the internet? You go first. Um, I know, right? Thank you. <laughs> um, I think that mom shaming, like I was saying, it, it, it's a very real thing. And I think you have to decide what you're going to take. And it's easier with social media. If you find that you're in a community, in a space on the page that's not giving you and restoring your spirit, then leave. You know, you don't have to be a part of that because any space that you put your yourself in, you have to make sure that the energy that you want to receive, that you're getting it. And so it's not fair to us to even compare ourselves because like we've all been saying, we all have our own purpose, we all have our own path. God has given each of us a gift. So if you're saying, I'm going to compare myself to this person, you're telling God that he made a mistake in making you. And he didn't make a mistake. Where you are is where he has placed you and you just have to keep on trusting him and moving forward. That, and that's how I do it. I just keep on trusting him and moving forward. This was an idea, like I said, for eight years. Imagine if I had given up, you know? And the people who have been in my life from day one, they know it. And it was like, there were so many times I wanted to just give it up. But you just have to, if you have a vision, you have to believe that it's gonna come through and that everything that you're going through is just a process. Um, not just in mom shaming, but I think in life, you're going to have those that support you, and then you're also going to have those haters. And like they say, the minute that you stop having haters, then you got to do something bigger so you get more haters. Um, no one is ever going to agree with you, okay? And decide what, sometimes that certain comments don't even need to be like, put into existence. Right, right. Let them comment, let them do whatever they want. They're miserable and misery likes company. If you allow it to have an effect on you, trust me, you're gonna start cursing, you're gonna start saying anything, yeah. another person's gonna yeah. follow it. Not even worth it. Not worth it. Um, so, yeah, no. That's it. Another thing is you need to shut up the little boys that come up to you and yes, say, yes. No, don't do it. You cannot do it. Yes. Look at me today here in the pond at the first <laughs> Right. <laughs> this lady here next to me put me in place. And She's I'm doing so great. Grateful. Yes, yes. I'm so grateful for each one of you. Yes. So, and all of you guys that came to yes. wake up very early Saturday in the morning <laughs> and come to support us. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> Um, I would say two things when it comes to mom shaming. Um, the first thing, I was just talking to a friend about this, like I'm a visual person and I'm a bit dramatic, so I just like visualize, like if you haven't noticed, I visualize like a rain cover, right? So when people say things to you, I picture them as like drops of rain. 
So am I gonna let those little drops, those little drops of shame penetrate? Am I gonna let them hit me? Am I gonna let them affect me? Or am I gonna let them, just like a rain repeller would do, just keep on rolling and hit the ground? And you have you have to be the one to say, no, I'm gonna let that keep rolling and hit the ground. And I think another thing for us, because if we're all honest, we all shame other people. Like we could say that we don't, we all just, <laughs> that's just how we're wired. But one thing that I'm like trying to be more aware of is just like understanding that Different people have different cultures, have different backgrounds, have different upbringings. So everybody's just doing the best that they can do with what they're given. Everybody's just doing the best that they can do with how their parents raised them, the best that they could do with the resources that they have. So if we just look at someone and instead of saying, oh my gosh, look, look at all those boogers on her kid's nose. No, being like, you know, she's doing the best she can do with her situation. Um, that really has like kind of changed my my perspective on shaming others and also just receiving the shame from other people, I'm like, no, you, you're gonna roll off and hit the ground, that's, that's it. Right. You're not coming into me. That's right. Do you have any more questions? Yes, come up, please. Yes, please come up and ask the question. I'm like sitting here and I'm like, should I ask? I'm like, oh. of course, of course, shut that voice inside. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi everyone, happy Saturday. My name is Jackie. Um, first of all, the panel discussion has been excellent so far. And I'm sitting there, and you know my husband is like, I can't believe she went up to the top. Okay. <laughs> but my question is, Mike, you may have answered it, but I, I don't know, I'm just, I keep thinking about myself being a mom, I'm a mom of, four-year-old twins, and I'm thinking to myself, how do you find the time? You guys have so much energy, and oh, I wake up, and I do this, and I run, and this, and the third. How do you find the time to uh, have self-care for yourself, but in addition, not feel guilty about it? Because uh, work life, the amount of hours you're working, you come home, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm not only tired, I want to uh, connect with my children at the end of the day, but then I'm like, man, I'm a size plus, plus, plus. I need to work out and go downstairs in the basement and you know work out. So how do you find the time? And that's a serious question for me because I just can't get that together. So thank you. How you got it? Yes. Yes, Jackie. Jackie? Um, one of the first thing you have to do is um, meditate five minutes. And when you feed yourself, you're gonna have the time. And because you need to take care of yourself first. If you don't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of them. And one of the thing is meditate. That's my, recommend, my personal recommendation. Five minutes, 10 minutes, and you're gonna see how you're gonna feed your soul, everything, and you're gonna have that energy. Or those, 50 jumping jacks in the morning, and that's gonna wake up your mind, and you're gonna feel in peace at the same time, and you're gonna find the time. Yeah. What time do your twins wake up? Oh boy. You say your boys. Right? You need the so. And do you go to work? Of course, what time? I'm happy to work from nine o'clock. So it's uh, a matter of let's wake up, girls. Let's go wash up. Let's get ready. Let's get some breakfast. Let's go right to school. And so that time frame, I'm exhausted from the night before because they've been up. Uh, oh, McDonald had a farm. Oh, <laughs> and they and I'm late. And us, of course, we direct and you're yeah. like, go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. So it's like, I get what you're saying in the morning. I like, I, I, like I'm in the shower, like, thank you, Lord, for waking me up this morning. <laughs> but it's like that time of, and I get it, that time of uh, meditation and or first thing in the morning. Yeah. Yes. I, I just, yeah, I don't. You need what time do you wake up? So? About 6.30, 6 o'clock. Try waking up at 6. Yeah. Again, it has to do with time management. Like myself. In order for me to take a quiet shower and enjoy my first cup of coffee, I wake up an hour before my child. Right. Why? Because you're not rushing yourself. Mm -hmm. I literally, I have a pattern. I wake up, I get my toothbrush ready, turn on the shower, put the towel, sit down, and pee. I check my email, <laughs> get in the shower, brew my coffee, and then I take 15 minutes on pinches, I have a little workout, I do some sit-ups, and then I wake up my kids, and I'm not rushing. Right. So when they get up, you start getting yourself ready, you're already happy, because you got that little workout, you got yeah. your coffee. 
So manage your time. Try to wake up 30 minutes before. As tired as you are, you will get the goal done, which is, you know, focusing on yourself for a little bit of time before the madness starts in the morning and you have to start rushing. So that's what I did. I wake up 4.30, 5 o'clock. No matter what time I go to sleep, but again, I'm focusing on myself and I'm not putting myself last. No matter what time I go to sleep, I wake up and I get what I have to do in the morning right away. Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, just piggybacking off of her, the same thing. I know that stage. My son wakes up and he wakes up at 7 and he is on 10 from the second he wakes up. ABCs, everything from the moment he wakes up. So I too... Even if I go to bed late, I have to wake up extremely early, have my coffee, pray, do everything. But I would say more for the kids, like scheduling is so good for them. Like kids thrive, and I'm, I'm only saying this, every job I've ever had has been with children. I used to be a pre-K teacher before I got pregnant, so I, I love kids. Um, but they thrive off of schedule. So even starting like a bedtime routine where, okay, you know at 6.30, you're taking your bath. 7 o'clock, you're reading three stories. Not four, three stories. Then you're gonna lay down playing like the same song. My son sleeps with the same song every single night. But like creating a routine for them, and eventually, it's hard. It took like four months for him to get it down. But now, around 6.30, he's winding down. He already knows that like, okay, we're turning off the TV. We're it's like the, the lights are dim. I'm setting the mood. Like how romantically you were the room, I'm sitting in the bedtime room, like, I dim the lights, there's no screens anywhere, we're only reading stories, we're not playing any loud instruments, like, the only things we can do are quiet activities, and then, yeah, you have, you have, I mean, it's hard work, everything is hard work, everything is a process, but I would definitely say scheduling, and even if it takes, like, five months for them to get it, they will get it, they're, they're smart, and that's why they're running you at seven in the morning to get ABCs, because they smart, they know what they're doing, but we just gotta be one step ahead. But scheduling, I'm telling you, it would change your life. Scheduling them would change your life too. Before we go to the next question, I just want to jack you real quick, because both of what they said, right, their kids with the schedule and everything, no, my kids don't want to go on schedules, okay? Because I do all that, like, but you all have to laugh at because we do all that, like, setting the mood, and they don't care about mood. Like, they just want to, they just want to sleep late. I'm like, what is the problem? Like, it's 9.30 and your eyes are still open. I'm like, I don't want to see your eyes anymore. You know, like, but one thing, one thing, so I'm like, in, we're like in the second month, baby. So yeah, yeah, no, we're still trying, you know, it's a, it's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. But one thing I have to say that I want all of you to do, we're all here so that we can be each other's accountability partners, right. okay? Mm -hmm. So what Rosa and what Joe and what Haley was saying about waking up early, if you could team up with someone today, that's one of your challenges. Mm -hmm. And if you could team up with someone today and say, you know you what? Up. Wake me up. Make sure that I'm make sure that I'm up at 5 a.m. today. And if we have to do and meditate together or we do whatever we're gonna do for two minutes, because that's all I have right now. We're gonna start real quick. You up? I'm up. Two minutes, meditate. Got that second? I'm in. And go have go wash your face and have your tea or whatever. But accountability partners are very crucial. And I'm not and it's good to have an accountability partner, but honestly, but they could be tired too, so they're not waking up. And honestly, moms, you turn inside like, he's still sleeping. <laughs> you know? So so have that accountability partner because if I know that one of these ladies are gonna be calling me, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, all right. She's gonna call me in a while. Or this phone is ringing, who's calling me? Okay, yeah, I'm up, you know? So once you're up, you're up. And you know, you get the energy somehow. God will give you that energy, that is your desire. So team up with someone today, not just on for a wake-up partner, but for anything that you're desiring or doing today, if you want to get into exercising and you know that person is a good uh, trainer, team up with that person. Accountability is crucial. Right. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, Jason, and then we'll take you next. Thank you. Um, really, really quick, shout out to all the moms making it work. Um, my question is, I have a specific experience, of course, so this is particularly focused on single moms. Um, there's a proverb that says that it takes a village. Um, so I'd love to hear from all the moms, you know, whether you're single or not, um, in terms of how you leverage your friends, your family, your community to help you raise your children. Why don't we start with Joe and then we'll come on down. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it absolutely takes a village. I mean, there's some days where my husband works all day, all night. We don't see him, and I'm on the phone with my mom like, how did you do it? Because my mom was single mom. I'm like, it's only been one day. I'm not the rip. Well, I can't remember here, but I'm, I'm like going, literally going crazy. But I, it, as she was saying, accountability, yes, that has been my main thing. Um, just being able to call someone, call my sister and say, hey, I'm struggling. Or call her and say, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, oh, he's crying. I don't know what to do. Community is everything. Like, for whatever reason, when we're feeling overwhelmed, like, the, our first idea is to isolate. Oh, they won't understand. Oh, I'm bothering them. Oh, they're going to think I'm this. They're not going to think I'm a good mom. We, we let all these thoughts stop us from reaching out, but community is key. I, I still call my mom, I'm 28 years old, I still call her when my son's sick, and it's like, hey, um, should I send him to school because he's coughing? Like, I, without my community, I don't know what I would do. And maybe it's not your family group, but there's so many amazing things out there, um, like Moms Make It Work, the exchange. There's so many th different ways that you can form community, but we're not put here in this earth to do life alone. We are not meant to do life alone. We don't thrive doing life alone. So community is key and I would not be here without my community. In my time, I also have my mom, rest in peace, um, who helped me to raise the kids, babysitters. And then with the last three one, Jason was a father, brother, <laughs> boyfriend, everything. <laughs> yeah, and I have friends too that I call them. And I have my, my brother, Pablo. Uh, he's not here, but he's had to listen to me every single day. And I listen to him. So that's in friends. Um, I was lucky to be born in the Dominican Republic. So my grandmother raised me. Uh, I would have to wake up very early in the morning. So, you know, feed the chickens and carry the water from the well. And I was only seven. And, and um, so, yeah, so I mean, that independency and that family, or, you know, I guess structure was in me from like five or six. My mother didn't really allow me to really be a kid. I had to learn how to knit and I would play sports. And I would learn, she would force me to braid her hair every day. And um, I hated to braid hair just because of that. She would wake me up at 6 in the morning to braid her hair before she had to go to work. But um, no, um, why am I forgetting the question every time? <laughs> ah, how do I do it? Um, the village. My village consists of my mom and my sister. Um, my mom right now is my babysitter for my two-year-old. Uh, she takes care of Chloe uh, Monday through Friday. Right now she's with my 11-year-old so I can make it to the bagel shop and then come here. So if it wasn't for them, I would not be able to uh, do half of the things that I do. Same, uh, my mom, who's here, right, like I said earlier, she's a great help to me. And then I married into a wonderful family. My in-laws are very helpful. The kids are with them today. So it's just, it's, you know, God's blessings, you know, have uh, given me that uh, village. But I want to encourage those who don't have a village, because I know it could also be very difficult um, when you feel like you're doing it alone. And that's why I said, you know, to always make sure you find yourself, as the panel was saying as well, find yourself in a community so that you can find that help, because you don't have to do it alone. There's so many uh, places that are offering help, you know, and like I said, Moms Make It Work wants to be one of those. Even if you find a good friend, you know, someone that you can trust, that. You know, um, you know, you stay with the kids today and I'll stay with the kids tomorrow, you know, because you need that time. And sometimes you don't know you need that time, but you need that time. So don't isolate yourself. Make sure that you find yourself a great community to be a part of because village is very important. We had, thank you. <laughs> we had another question. I don't have a question, so I just want to say that this lady over here, I I don't have babies, but I have a 17 years old and he's 11 and she is my village. I go for, to her for everything I need and she heard me to raise my kids and give me good advice. So I, we are very, very thankful to have her in our life. She's our village. She is. She showed me how to live my best life. <laughs> she knows from basketball, baseball, football. And everything she has said to me, Maria, you gotta live your life and you have to enjoy yourself before you be a mom. You have to enjoy yourself first. So, thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, one of the things that I recommend to moms, to young moms, is so I used to go and begging people for help, for programs. There is so many programs out, out there and for ballet. I don't care that they told me the tuition is 100, 200. They say, listen, I'm a single mom of five children. <laughs> I need, and I want education for my kids. So they all went to a good school. Mm -hmm. Thank God, and they are educated. Thank God, I don't have uh, children that go to jail, drugs, and nothing like that. All of them are very successful, and I'm proud of you guys. And I'm sure you're all proud of your mom today. Yeah. <laughs> the mom wanna negotiate, right? That's one thing you can get from mom. Because what she would say, what mom used to take us all out, imagine eight kids to the store, school shopping, you could imagine how much that would be. Somehow she would manage to bring that price from $50 to $10 for each of them. She used to watch them like, how can I do that? <laughs> so let's give a round of applause to all of our panelists.